Hey everyone, Ryan here with Flakeside Studios, and on today's AX8 adventure, we're going to try to sound like multiple eras of Metallica using custom impulse responses. Not one, not two, but four patches, and actually a fifth bonus patch um, are going to be covered in this video, so buckle up, this one's going to be a long one. <laughs> I can't go any further in this video without giving a huge shout out and thanks to B. Galay. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, you can check out his channel below in the description. But um, this video, nor the holier than thou cover that I did last, would, uh, would be possible without the impulse responses he made because they sound dead on Metallica to each of the songs. Um, I don't know how exactly he's ripping them out of the song and creating them into an impulse response form, but um, they're absolutely killer. So. Um, kind of the whole premise of this video was to take what I use in that cover with a real Mesa Mark IV and um, throw them in, you know, full-blown amp modeler status. As you can probably tell from the playthrough, we're going to be covering the first five Metallica albums tones. That is Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Justice for All, which is my personal favorite, and Black Album. Sorry for you load and reload fans out there. That's not real Metallica, <laughs> in my opinion, um, although he does have uh, load and reload impulse responses that sound great with dual rectifiers and tri-axis and that sort of amps if uh, you do want to try them out on your own time. So um, we're going to have four patches though for five albums because Kill 'Em All and Ride the Lightning were both Marshall based sounds and they were both pretty stripped down in terms of production and effects and all that so we're going to be able to cram all that into one patch and then uh, the rest of them were all based off of Mesa Boogie and Roland Jazz Chorus amps for the clean stuff. And of course, we'll be using a little bit different settings and using uh, the impulse response on each applicable album. The aforementioned fifth preset is a lead patch that I created for the Holier Than Now cover. I thought I would go ahead and put that in this video since I didn't put it in that one. Um, that's based around a custom preamp that Kirk was using at the time, although you know most of the rhythm sound on that album is still very much Mesa Mark stuff. For the guitar, still using the Wild Audio Blood Eagle. This thing has been an absolute workhorse on this series here recently uh, because we're using a lot of stuff with EMG active pickups. So that is an 81 in the bridge. Um, I have an 85 in the neck. I think Hetfield still used 60s at that point, um, which would you know be important on the, the clean portions, but still sounds very similar. Um, the earlier Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning albums, they were using passive pickups, high output passives, but again, the impulse responses are so close and the output levels are so similar, even though the dynamics not quite as much that, um, yeah, it just really doesn't matter. Uh, of course, when they play that material live nowadays, they are using MGs, so again, kind of a moot point. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. So get your down picking hand ready and scoop the mids. Let's play some Metallica. Let's start with scene two of the Kill the Lightning patch because I'm a genius and made this one backwards. Um, 
the general layout is going to look pretty much identical throughout all these patches. They'll shift around based on, you know, how I constructed each one. Um, they might be missing some blocks. So this one doesn't have a delay. I don't think there was any delays in um, Ride the Lightning or Kill Them All. If there was, it was on, you know, lead parts that um, I, I don't remember. Uh, but mostly it's going to be drive, amp, cab, chorus, enhancer, a delay, reverb. Enhancer block, again, it's one of those things that I play with um, just to enhance the stereo sound when I'm doing these kind of videos, but uh, it's something that you should use with caution, especially when playing out loud, um, and even more importantly when recording. So, again, just kind of a, a nicety feature here. Um, for Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning, we're going to be using the Brit 800. That's, so, that's JCM 800 amp. Um, have it dialed in like so. Got the bright switch on, a thousand picofarads, a cut at about 80 hertz. Um, it's one of those things that doesn't do a, a whole, whole lot, but it does just add a little bit more of that um, tighter low end that uh, that's present on Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning. Honestly, I think Ride the Lightning might be one of the best martial sounds of all time, in my opinion, for, for metal. Um, you know, a lot of that has to do with the cabinet impulse responses, as you'll, you'll see in a moment. But we're going to keep this exactly the same between Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning. Um, I, I think it was... Uh, 800 they were using it could have been a 2203 of course there's there's different models of that but this one works just wonderfully the um, 34 mod works really well too but i find that one's a little a little bit too much has that really high frequency um dirt that i don't really like especially because we're going to be using distortion pedals so scene two i'm using the rat distortion that's a proco rat um, I, I gotta tell you, I hate this pedal. <laughs> um, I've, I've not played it with any of my amps, but every time I've tried one, I was like, who, who likes these things? Um, it has that, that chainsaw sound, which, um, you know, working on lower gain amps or mid gain amps, it makes sense why you'd want that, but you can see it doesn't do the tube screamer thing. It's got this really wide band of, uh, frequencies that it affects. So that's why we have the tone on nothing. Um, definitely not what you would do on a tube screamer. Uh, drive just enough to where it doesn't go silent and then the level's pretty much cranked and I, I kind of play with those two to get the, the level set. Um, this is what Hetfield was using on Ride the, or not Ride the Lightning on Kill em All. And then scene six above it, I have what Hammett was using. Um, so basically the same thing except with the tube screamer. Fairly certain he was using a TS9 on Kill em All. Um, I know that they were using tube screamers on uh, Ride the Lightning. So it's a very similar sound. This one just has... It's, you'll just have to hear it for yourself um the magic happens here at the cabinet so this is the kill em all ir wave sounds pretty much dead on i've got a small proximity effect um just to bring in a little bit of the low end since kill em all is such a um high and mid heavy scratchy guitar tone which worked great for early thrash metal um and then got the high cut there low cut there and um, just a bit of a reverb, a uh, wide hall reverb, because I'm assuming all that was added in post to give it space, but there's definitely a lot of reverb present on uh, on that album, which is kind of a symptom of, you know, the early 80s, and uh, that will also carry over to Ride the Lightning. So let's start out, I'll give a little bit of rundown on this, and then we'll switch to scene six, and you can hear the ever so slight difference between the two. <laughs> So the 808 smooths over the guitar a lot more than the Rat does. For Kill 'Em All, that works really well though. Um, and both of them, obviously, when combined, if you you know kind of do a double tracking thing, I think will work great. But um, yeah, Hetfield definitely made this work. Although I still prefer the Tube Screamer sound personally. So that's the Kill 'Em All stuff. Um, scenes one and five are where we're going to do uh, the Ride the Lightning, and it looks exactly the same except I have the Tube Screamer on both. The reason you see this GEQ here is this is the way I like to EQ my Jackson just to make it sound more like um, this Blood Eagle when uh, when I'm playing with that one. So you can use that if you want to um, you know dial in some frequencies. Um, if you have H4As, maybe that'll work for you. Otherwise, just keep it flat like I have here. Um, so the only thing that changes here is um, number one, the reverb. I go to a, a little bit more 
darker reverb. Um, if I do, yeah, if I, I thought I remembered that, we have a low pass here, a high cut at 3000 hertz. Um, Ride the Lightning is a very dark guitar tone, and it's definitely reflected in the in the reverb, which I'm assuming is some you know post effects, some tape stuff. And then the cabinet is the Ride IR, so that's um, based off of the song Ride the Lightning, and um, it works great on the entire album. And nothing else has changed, so the same amp, same everything else, and um, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> God, I could play that song on repeat until I die. I love Ride the Lightning. Um, so yeah, it gives that just, it's just a gnarly guitar tone. I don't know exactly what mics and, um, you know, positions were used, but uh, again, one of my favorite Marshall sounds of all time. So um, that's Ride the Lightning. And um, over here we have just a couple solo setups that I've thrown a Clyde Wah model and, um, you know, some, some different time-based effects if you want to uh, solo it out, so two, six, four, and eight are ride the lightning, or uh, kill them all rather, and then one, three, seven, five is uh, is ride the lightning. Because again, I set these up backwards, <laughs> um, and I made the ride the lightning patch first, and thought, you know what, we can just we can cram kill them all in there. So that's the first patch. Um, patch number two covers master of puppets, and this one is where things start to get really interesting. So um, you see a very minimal rhythm set up here, no reverb because it was a very dry um, mixed album. Uh, some people's favorite Metallica mix, which I definitely can't blame them um, since you can actually hear the bass guitar. Uh, we have the Puppet IR, which uh, pretty much same setup, everything here, except I turned the proximity effect off. Didn't feel like it really needed any added bass when playing along to the album. It sounds pretty much dead on without it. Um, and then for the amp, we get to use the almighty USA 2C++. So this is based off of the Mark 2C++ Coliseum that Hetfield has with the Crunchberries mod, which I'm assuming, um, just, I don't know exactly what it does, but I'm assuming it, it adds a little bit, um, of a different mid shift or present shift to get, you know, even more of that Hetfield type of, um, you know, scoop. Uh, the only thing we changed here in the power amp, we are using EL34s because Hetfield uh, slaved his Mark II C pluses into JCM800 power stages. So, you know, get a little bit more of that British vibe. Unfortunately, where this doesn't have two amp blocks, I can't do an EL or a 6L6 into EL34 to get kind of that, you know, um, double effect going on. But I, I feel like the EQ of that effect is already kind of captured in the, in the IR. So um, it's really not that big of a deal. The GEQ, as you might imagine, we have those mids absolutely squashed. Uh, we also have the 6600 band uh, very low as well. Um, this was taken from some pictures I found of the tour rigs at that time. And, you know, it, it, they changed it day to day. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's what the album is. And I tweaked it um, a little bit just by ear compared to the album. And all that's going to depend on the, the sound of your guitar and everything. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's pretty much um, in the same vein. And then, as you'll notice, there's no overdrive going into this because it's the Mark II C+. It doesn't need it. I don't think they use the bright switch, but I did just to add some top end. Sounds more correct to my ear. Input drive, overdrive. Um, didn't look like it was that high on their setup, but to get the, the right gain, um, I had to, to use it that high. They did use the overdrive higher than the input drive, though, which um, I believe on the amp itself is marked drive and lead drive if i remember correctly um so that's kind of weird again the mark 2c plus the eq stage is actually a pre-eq on your guitar so this is like having a clean boost and being able to you know dial in different frequencies so you don't want a whole lot of bass you want uh, basically no mids for hetfield because you know it's metallica uh, so we got it to one there treble quite a bit so that's what's bringing in the high end crunch and then presence they they don't use a whole lot of um i don't know exactly what frequencies that's affecting but it's definitely you know the higher end and 
Um, it's one kind of funny thing about Metallica is it, it's very, you know, big scoop and then kind of a ridge and then another big scoop. And that, that's what gives that focus sound. And this is what you get. <laughs> There is no doubt something magical about a Mark series amp into a Marshall cabinet. That is just freaking epic. Scene two is a little different. So um, here we're using the Roland Jazz Chorus for the clean stuff. And uh, one probably one of my favorite clean amps in, in the entire Axe Effects library, to tell you the truth. Um, it just works so well with EMG pickups. Um, of course, it's a solid state amp. Roland makes great stuff. And um, we are switching to the 2x12 Top Boost Silver, which I'm... Um, this is kind of mimics the speakers used in the Roland Jazz Chorus, which is what is recommended on the uh, the Axe Wiki and by you know Fractal Audio themselves. Being a jazz chorus, as you imagine, it has a built-in chorus um, effect. So we're using uh, Dimension One. I don't really know if it was stereo or what. This sounded good though. Um, it sounds pretty pretty close to what's used on on Master Puppet. So that's what we're going with again. Enhancer block, and it does have a built-in reverb function so just kind of again went by ear and, and used what I thought worked well. Of course that isn't perfect because this guitar doesn't have 60s has a um, 85 on the neck so um, not like for like on that but the dynamics are pretty much you know spot on so um, and then we have if I can remember nope that's wrong <laughs> it's gonna take me a second to navigate through uh, through all these scenes that's a lead for Kirk so you can do that this is um, I believe this is what I had for just the um, the harmony part there in the interlude So that's the important parts of that, at least. Um, of course, I have a few more set up here. Some of these patches aren't, or some of these scenes rather, aren't used. Um, but you know, if you want to get your Kirk on with the with the wah, you can uh, you can certainly do that. So let's move on to the Injustice for All patch, which um, is probably my favorite out of all of these. I love the production on Injustice for All. The whole no bass guitar part <laughs> kind of sucks, you know, that being EQ'd so closely to the rhythm guitar, but. Um, the dryness of that, it just, I don't know, it fits the imagery of the cover so well. Um, it does remind you of like granite in audio form. Um, I absolutely love it. And um, these impulse responses nail it. So I'm using the Harvester of Sorrow IR, which I think works best for the entire album. There's one for Blackened as well. Um, I don't know if I have it installed, but this is the one I, I really like. Um, just add a little bit of proximity, or no, that's not supposed to be on. I added no proximity effect. Let's save that real quick because um, this ha does have such uh, so much low end. Um, the amp settings are going to be fairly identical, except there's no mids. Crank the treble, um, backed off the presence even more. Um, this is pretty much identical. And again, we're using EL34s in the power tube. So um, this is the result. <laughs> That's an almost 30 year old guitar tone that still stands the test of time. So, so freaking cool. Um, scene two is basically the same thing as uh, the Master of Puppets with the jazz chorus, just slightly different settings to match the, you know, the slight difference in, in tone and uh, the clean parts.
like the other patches, I have a um, couple lead-ish portions. So um, there were there was some kind of heavy use of chorus in the lead parts, at least what it sounded like, or they were tracked so heavily that it was phasey um, that, you know, either way it works out. So this would be like some of the overdubbing on Justice for All, the beginning of Blackened, which that's played backwards. So that wouldn't really help. But um, yeah, pretty much same stuff over here. Do have a couple of portions where we're using the um, OD just for Kirk, for Kirk's lead stuff. Um, not 100% sure if he was even using it at that point, but it does it does work well. So that's it's going to be an assumption I made. Um, and again, not all of these scenes are used. And that's pretty much Injustice for All. It's a pretty simple sound overall um, as far as the, the electric guitar portions go. Now, the Black Album patch looks a little funny because this is actually the same patch I used for the Holier Than Thou cover, hence why there's an effects loop block. This is what I plugged my Mark IV into. Um, and then use this as basically a fancy cab and uh, reverb effects unit. Um, the only difference is I used a second IR, which was the um, hol or not holier now the um, sad but true, which is a bit more grainy sounding, a little bit more mid heavy. So a couple commenters were like, "Oh, I can hear the mids. This is Metallica. Ha ha." Well, it's because I, I like a little bit of mids in in my mixes, unlike Metallica did. And there were still a lot of mids in Black Album. That's why it's you know it, it stands the test of time as far as. Uh, the mix goes. Bob Rock did a pretty commendable job on it considering the pressure they were working under. Uh, but here we're just using the Sandman. Um, so this is the inner Sandman, kind of same low cut, high cut, no proximity. Um, using a little bit of studio reverb because that album was just chock full of you know wet reverbs. And does sound pretty good. Um, using a gate there just because I can and it was more for the real amp than it is for this. A slight uh, EQ difference. I put a... Um, just a, a small four decibel, um, you know, cut on the 400 hertz frequency. That's something you can't control from the sliders and the amp alone. Um, I, I think they were running through rack EQs at that point because they were still slaving amps. And the Mark IV they were using, they used so many amps on that album, um, was actually wired as a preamp. So I don't know if they were slaving it. I, I don't know exactly what, you know, details are fuzzy, but they used a Mark series. Um, they used a 2C plus as well on some songs. They used a modified Marshall, which kind of had the, you know, the Fortin type mod at the time, um, as close to it as that was. Um, and then Hammett was using a couple different things as well. So I just, I used that to, to capture a little bit more of the, the, uh, the EQ. Then instead of the 2C plus, we're using the USA lead, which is based off the Mark IV. And um, again, pretty similar um, as far as the, the dialing in goes. Um, GEQ is a bit more aggressive on the 750 hertz. And we also have a presence shift enabled. And this brings it in line closer to what the, um, you know, the, the Mark II C++ plus plus is sounded like. Um, again, using EL34 power amps. I'm not sure what, I'm, I'm assuming they ran it through some sort of EL34 power amp. If it was, you know, wired as a preamp, no guarantees. But it, again, it sounds pretty much the same. Um, I didn't touch anything in dynamics or anything like that because it just didn't really need it. The mix and guitar production changed a little bit more from song to song on Black Album than, you know, compared to some of the previous albums. Um, it did take a long time to record Black Album, so, it, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, so you might want to play around with different impulse responses depending on which song you're, you're going after. But I, I feel like the Sandman one covers a very large percentage of the, the songs on Black Album for the rhythm work. Sounds really good. And then finally, the bonus patch that I split out differently for Black Album is uh, here what I used for the holier than thou cover scene one and five the only difference is i have a wall enabled and again i, I put in a geq if you'd like to use that because it's kind of what i um mess with with my jackson just to bring it a little bit more in line with the the sound of the guitar i'm using currently this one is actually really interesting if i quit banging my guitar on the table that'd be cool um use the same reverb same enhancer the cabinet's still a, um, I kept this, the blend with the Sabbath True and Sandman IR. So this, this is something you can grab from, um, B Galay's collection. If you do feel like that small delay, just to get a little bit of the phasing going on that I like and brought the level down accordingly. 
but um, we're actually using a CA3 plus lead model, which is based off of the custom audio preamp. Um, I think Meshuga actually used this on um, their recent, on the most recent album as kind of like the dirty, fuzzy, high end sounding amp. And um, it's kind of just a hot rodded Marshall channel, kind of like a Bogner kind of. Um, I think they were they were exper experimenting with Bogner fishes as well, which I, I think Megadeth was heavily into at that time, at least Dave Mustaine. So uh, kind of it's got that vibe, and it, it does work really well with this album, especially with um, my Jackson. So may not sound as good with this guitar, but we'll we'll definitely give it a shot. And then this is an amp that definitely needs a bit of an overdrive. So using the same TS eight or TS eight hundred eight settings as last time, um, I didn't touch pretty much anything else. Sounded pretty good. So um, EQ'd as such, a little bit of a bright switch, give it some top high end to compete with the Mark stuff, and this is what it sounds like. As you can tell, this is way more saturated, um, way more gainy than uh, the the rhythm patch because I have this set up for for lead. So you might be able to you know tone that down a little bit if you want to match uh, Kirk's side of the album. Again, I have no idea what he was you know, using for the leads and such at that point because um, the Year in the Life Metallica documentary only shows him sitting on a couch and there's you know racks and amps and other rooms and that kind of stuff. I, you have no idea what they're playing through. So just a best guess. It does work pretty well. And then, of course, we got the infamous wah pedal, and this is using the Crybaby, um, just because I think it's where we're using it at the time. Again, kind of a shot in the dark. I like the sound of this one. I like the Clydes for the other stuff. You can change if you feel like it. <laughs> Holy shit, it is hard to play like Kirk sitting down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's uh, that's basically what I use for the lead patch. Um, I, it's not, you know, the, the sound's going to be quite a bit different, so I'm using a different guitar, but um, that's the patch extravaganza, pretty much in a nutshell. So you got um, four that cover rhythm, and, and then one that covers black album lead, and there's a little bit of lead stuff sprinkled in throughout. I will export all of these put them in a folder share a said folder and you will find that in the description below if you're interested and make your own tweaks and, and all that good stuff hope you get some use out of them and hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching as always and be sure to stay tuned as we'll be doing something like this about once a month or so um it's kind of my plan i've got a very long laundry list of artists and guitar tones to go after and think it's going to be a, still be a lot of fun so be sure to uh, stay tuned thanks see you next time bye